Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Moving Pictures Kenya. I've been receiving questions from many of you asking what kind of jobs are available for nurses here in the USA. For example, the question I've been asked many times is, are there recruitment agencies that are recruiting caregivers from Kenya to the USA? I posed this question to Dr. Makobe and this was his response. Uh, there is, uh, that is what is called a... Um, Home care aid. Yes. No, we don't take we don't take home and care aid here. Yeah. No, we don't. Okay. And and we are short of them, but the oh you you, uh, if you uh, the immigration department only allows registered nurses and BSN. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you cannot you like, like uh, if you are a, an LPN or certified uh, certified nurse or what do they call them um, CNA certificate nurses in Kenya uh, community nurses community yeah. nurses yeah. no they are not allowed they just register nurses okay. and and uh, BSNs okay. Other than the clinical aspect of nursing, yes, the cultural part of nursing is also important, and it's reflected in the exam. Mm. You understand? Yeah. So, if they don't exercise and practice the exam, because they have never been here, yeah. So, if they do not have a tutor who is telling them, this is how we practice nursing here. This is how we treat our our patients. This is how. These are the rights and privileges of patients. Mm -hmm. I I think that Kenya first now will reach there, but I don't think it has reached the level where they they think that patients have rights and privileges in the hospital mm -hmm. because of scarcity. It looks seems like it's a privilege for you to get the service, yeah. and the nurse things where well, you need to take what you can get. Yeah. You know here, first the patient has a right even to decline treatment. Mm. You can't force them. Yeah. Okay? And the patient has a right to to ask for somebody who they can understand because it's their body. Yes. That means that if they think they are not understanding what you're saying, yeah. they have a right to ask for another person. Yes. And if too many of them ask for another nurse, maybe you may not have a job. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So it's that cultural understanding that's important and it's, it will be reflected in the exam. Yeah. So uh, also, it's the requirement by CGFNS and the health code that agents who are certified recruiters mm. tell and train the, rec the, the uh, foreign educated nurses that this is, they train them with the culture. Yes. You understand? Yes. So the one of the things that you will get mm. when you have an agent who's certified is the, they will read you your rights and privileges, give you the code so you know where you stand. Yes. Other people will not tell you, staffing agencies will not give you that because unless they are certified, they yeah. won't give you. Yeah. But me and the other certified uh, 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 recruiters, we are required. The first incident we meet and you tell me that you want me to work with you, the first thing I give you is the health code. Yes. So that we can go through mm. the, your rights and responsibilities, my rights and responsibilities, and the rights and responsibilities of facilities. Yes. And also to inform you that you have the same legal rights as any U.S. citizen. Mm. It's in the code. Yes. And that one, for every nurse we, we work with, we have one signed on the, on the on file showing that we gave them. Yes. And we explain to them what they can do and what, what we can do and what they can do, what they can do, what they can do. And um, the fact that they need to have a contract, which they need to have 30 days yes. to look through. We, we cannot just tell them, sign here, we are now in contract, that, that's it, right? Yeah. You, we, we, give a, we, are, we are expected to give a contract to the nurse, but it is, sh they should have 30 days from the day they are, receive it to the day they sign it, so that they can go through, go ask somebody else, ask a lawyer, make sure that they are uh, getting the right thing. Yeah. Uh, there is also the requirement that 
if they, at the end of the day, when they reach here, they find that they have a, another job, there's a clause there of how they can break that contract if they want to break it. That means there's a payment to be made. Mm. Uh, normally, there's a, a lump sum, yeah. but uh, up to this year, that lump sum was stood there the whole contract time. Yes. But right now, the rules have changed. See that the, the lump sum is prorated. Okay. So somebody who comes today yeah. and decides to break the, the contract, Suppose they, we say we, they pay 50,000. Yes. So, so where you are going, mm. suppose I signed you on, yes. and then you reach here and then you decide that I have another facility I want to go to. Mm. I say, no problem, you're a free man. Mm. This is the land of the free and the home of the brave. Yeah. So you can go. Mm. I think that is very important mm -hmm. that you need to clarify. Mm -hmm. So you say me, I come here as a nurse. Yes. Like for example, I came here last uh, two years ago mm -hmm. on a three-year contract. Mm -hmm. So I've worked for two years, mm -hmm. and then I feel like I don't want to continue the contract mm -hmm. for the next one year. Yes. What should I do? Now, you look in the contract. Yes. Your, your contract, if you came here three years ago, yes. it is um, the, the, the lump sum amount that you are supposed to pay yeah. should be prorated. Okay. Suppose you, they told you you will pay 30000 Yes. to break the contract. Yes. Now, if you have worked... Two of them. Yeah. You can. You should only pay ten. Okay, ten. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's what, that's the improvement of the new health code. That's what they said. Okay. Instead of holding in thirty for yes. the whole three years, yes. it's prorated. If you work one year, yeah. you pay twenty. Okay. Yeah. So like now the, this ten, mm -hmm. we, you you must pay them once off, or it will be also. No, you have to pay with them once. You're breaking. You are breaking the contract. So your new employer must pay. Okay. Your new employer must pay. Okay. And if you don't pay, it goes on your on your on your. Um, on your on your on your credit yes. you because most of the time most people won't want to work with you okay. even the where you are going yeah they will think you will break it yeah you know because the u.s works on contracts right yeah so now if you are breaking the biggest contract they might take you in a crisis mm. but let you go later yeah yeah because they can't trust you okay and that is one thing that kenyans should know because i think uh we still have a culture in Kenya where people just sign things yes. to sign, mm. okay? Mm. And then they think they are going to walk away. But here, the system holds you accountable, yeah. okay? Yeah. So if you, if you say you are signing a contract with me, you need to read it. That's why the, 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 the court tells you, read the contract. Mm. If you do not understand the language, they should translate it in a language you understand. Oh, okay. So you can read it and you sign it with open eyes with, 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 so, that, so that you can certify that you actually understood what you're signing and you, are, you hold it uh, responsible. So you have that health code to make sure you sign yeah. and you have that contract to make sure you sign. Okay, okay so, now, so now you're going to take the exam. Go to South Africa. If you are a, a, a staffing agency employee, they will take care of the transport to go to South Africa. As a placement agent, we just advise you, you need to get your ticket and this is where most uh, candidates don't understand why they are placed in a five-star hotel. Yeah. But if you are a professional and knowing you are in a foreign country, yeah. And knowing you don't understand the security situation in that place, yeah. why would you be, why would you want to be placed in a, a place that it's risky? Yeah. So like in Jones, Johannesburg, I just want my country to stay at stand stand on complete. There's an area next mm. next to there, yeah. next to the exam testing center. exam centers, right? Yeah. And that place is expensive. Yes. So most of the time you use like seven hundred to go. And seven hundred and fifty seven hundred and fifty to go and seven hundred and fifty to to stay for three days. Yeah. Because you cannot go to South Africa today and take the exam. Yeah. You want to go to South Africa today, yeah. take a rest, sleep over, take exam tomorrow, rest and go go away. So you have three days to spend there. Okay. So that is that that you can see you can see that as we to, as we are talking, that money if you total up is mm -hmm. almost reaching four thousand. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. But remember, if you pass the exam and you come here and you are being paid $50 an hour, yeah. it's a week's pay. Yes. 
So it may look a lot of money in Kenya, but for what you are investing in, yeah. it's not. And what I've seen most people do is that they join uh, credit of uh, Sagos, yeah. they borrow the money, yeah. and they pay for it, they pay the expenses, mm. and they come here the first, the first month they pay. Yeah. They pay it off. Okay. You understand? Okay. So that is uh, what I would do. The point is that I also seen that the people who pay the money themselves are very serious studying for the exam. Mm. Those who, who somebody is paying, they are not investing anything, yeah. so they have nothing to lose. They have no skin in the game. Mm. So they are the ones who take three months to send the transcripts. Yeah. They are the ones who, who, take, who you tell to, to turn up to study and they are not showing up. Yeah. So uh, if you are investing your money, you don't want to invest in that kind of person. Yeah. You want to invest in somebody who is invested in the process. Yeah. And those people who pay for themselves are always very invested. Mm -hmm. So if you go to South Africa and you become one of the 20% who normally pass first time, mm -hmm. now uh, you go, we go back to CGFNS mm -hmm. for visa screen. Yes. Uh, for the state of Delaware, they don't require English test for you for them to get an uh, 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 authorization to test. Yeah. But the, fed, the federal government still yeah. require English language test. Yes. So you have to do the, I, uh, the, the eyelids yeah. to, to, to go to the British Council and send them do the, the exam. Yeah, I-L-E-T-S. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to do that. So uh, normally for African wood, we normally uh, uh, advise them to do at the back end. Yes. But th because Delaware doesn't ask for English language, mm. it's exempt because training is done in English. Yes. Although every nation has its own accents, yes, it doesn't mean there is one accent that is pro good and proper. Yeah. But of course, when you come here and you are now dealing with the patients, mm. it is your responsibility to make sure that your patients understand you. Okay. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so so you have to work on you had what uh, what, what they were saying in church. Yeah, yeah, you were saying that it's your responsibility now to to make sure that they understand you. Mm -hmm. But it, it also reaches a level where it has become their responsibility to understand you because mm -hmm. if you are the only provider, yeah. they have to understand. So this is a dance. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, for for the foreign educated nurses or those who are coming in. They just have to have the the confidence mm. that they know what they're talking about. And if somebody tells you, I don't understand you, you say, you repeat slowly, carefully, so make sure they understand it. Okay. So that is a cultural thing also, we have to train them. Yeah. So when you, when you go to, when you are not, when you are self-sponsored, mm. the visa screen, at, as also as CGFNS, costs $700. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Now, you, you, you imagine all the money now paid at visa screen. Now, when you have visa screen, when you have visa screen ready or visa screen, now we come to applying. Now your agent mm. has to look at your at your CV. Yeah. So that now you are now applying for jobs. Jobs, right? Yeah. But. One thing about the CV, the CV we want is not a biography. Yes. There's no reason why you cannot fit your resume in one page, one A4. Okay. Because it's simply, how does your abilities, skills, and knowledge help you to provide nursing nursing uh, services to the facility. Yes. That's it, because it's the marketing document. Yeah. Okay? That, that I'm just asking the question, like, when I look at the CVs, I'm just like, tell me how your abilities, skills, and knowledge will help you provide nursing services to my, my facility, in my facility, or the facility. You understand? Yes. So, I don't want seven pages. Yeah. I don't want two pages of resume. Yeah. 
imagine imagine how many resumes personnel or human resources get yeah and do you think they have the time to read eight pages of resume mm. they don't want your biography yeah. they don't want to know when you went to school yeah okay first of all they are um, uh what do you call protected classes yes. in the u.s yeah which you cannot include in your cv mm. you cannot tell anybody what you when you were born mm. most kenyans resumes have when somebody's born yeah so the agent will work with you to make sure that your resume is co is kosher according to the u.s according yes. to the u.s your resume should have your name and your conduct yes okay yeah and your license yeah okay yeah okay and then your skills your abilities skills and knowledge okay and how your experience and all those things will contribute to your performing of your job so this thing of writing that I like listening to African music doesn't help in a CV. How would that help you? If it will help you provide good nursing, but it should be one line. It should not. It should not. It should not. It should not. It should not have your CV. You have fifty pages, man. Yeah. So you see, that is one thing that a Nigerian like me, when I look at the resumes, I just normally, I don't want to know your religion. Mm -hmm. I don't want to know your sex, your gender. I do not want to know whether you are pregnant or not. I don't want to know. I don't want to know whether you are married. Yeah. Okay. That will come later when we are dealing with the the visa. Yeah. Us. Mm. As okay. Yeah. Or if the employer is dealing with the visa, you want to say I, I, I have children. I won't come with them. Okay. Yeah. But it should not appear in your resume. Yeah. Because you know when it appears in your resume, you can claim that. I didn't hire you because you are you are married, mm. or I didn't hire you because you are going to expect you are expecting a baby, mm. because pregnancy is a protected class, right? Yeah. Gender is a protected class. Why are you telling me about it? Mm. During the interview, I just want to know your yes, ability, skills, and knowledge, and how will they help you? Okay. That's what you should tell me on the resume. Okay. So now that resume, and um, as soon as as soon as you do the exam yeah. and you pass, the state that gave you the uh, authorization to test gives you a license. Yeah. So you are listed, you are a licensed person. Mm. So now with your resume and your license, we apply, we apply to facilities or we go to the facilities that are, have, we have orders for. Say, hey, we have another five mm. and we place you. Mm. Now we, we, we start doing the relocation. When you do when you do relocation, <clears throat> you know you you come here. You know you know sometimes you come here and you think you are going to have a red carpet uh, welcome at the airport. Yeah. You find there's nobody there. You are you go to go find yourself, right? Yeah. So what we do with our people is now we know when they are coming. We meet them. We make sure they have a place to stay because the employers here just want them to show up when they are ready to work. They don't want to know. Whether they have transport, they don't want to know whether they have a place to stay, they don't want to know. Mm. Their relationship with these people is just, you come and work your hours, we pay you, you pay you, pay you a salary. But as an agent, I want to know where you slept, where you are going to live, where your kids are going to school. Mm. Because it's through that, that you will, you will recommend me to another person. Yes. The facility in the U.S. don't want to know because they are not de dealing directly with you. Mm. So they just want you to show up. If you said you are reporting for orientation, you report for orientation and you go back. Yeah. So as a, a placement agent, we get involved mm. with the, the, the relocation, with the housing, with, the, with making sure that we, you get your driving license. You know very well when you come with a visa, yeah. it's not you haven't got your you haven't got your social security yet. Yeah. So as we will make sure you settle down, we take you to the motor vehicle place. You get your you you, you we we'll make sure that you, when as soon as your social security arrives in the mail, because again you have to give these people where you will be yeah. so that they can send your social security. Right? Yeah. That's one thing that most Kenyans don't know that you are setting getting. All the documents that you got when you were born in Kenya, you are getting them when you come here, right? Yes. Yeah, you are getting them from scratch. Yeah. So, and they have to be sent somewhere. Yeah. We provided an, an address for them to be sent. Yeah. 
Yes. So uh, that's what a placement agency. A staffing agency, in, on the other hand, as long as you are stateside, they want you to go to work. Okay. So now, the staffing agency, we said they are going to give you low money mm. and pay you working long hours and also almost require you to work for them exclusively. Yeah. A placement agency, we want you to be placed, we want you to get a contract and as long as you are fulfilling those hours, if it's 40 hours or 36 hours, if you fulfill those 36 hours in three days, the four days are yours. Yeah. You can go to Hawaii if you want, or you can go to take another job if you want. Yeah. So as long as you're fulfilling your obligation the contract, the placement the agencies don't care. Okay. Yeah. So the nurses are supposed to work 36 hours a week, or how many hours a week? Yeah, if they are working 12, if they are working in hostels, they work, they work 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12 okay. okay. Yeah. If they're working in a nursing home where they work uh, eight hours, then they work 40. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the, but normally, they, if they work also, they work, they work three 12 hour shifts. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. You see, you see. So basically, if you came in with a staffing agency, they would like to work you continuously, but that's what like, as long as you do the, the 36, we are good. You can go on vacation, you can do anything, but our recommendation is don't work all four. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. You don't work all four. Just, just, you can take a part-time job somewhere else mm. because obviously nurses are short. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And it will be, it will be, it will be a disservice to yourself and to the country if you came and just did 36 hours when people are need your services. Yeah. Okay? And also to yourself because you will we get a little more money okay. because the money you get on contract, the contract money may be lower mm -hmm. because we started with you in Kenya, we told you we'll give you 45, you come, you find that maybe you can take another job and they're giving you 60. Yeah. So even if you go to work there for 20 hours, you're getting 60 times 20, you understand? Mm -hmm. Extra, so that's all. Yeah, so I think uh, what you're talking about, nurses, I think normally call it uh, mpango wakando, you know, do that extra work. So uh, you, you are a placement agency mm -hmm. and the others are staffing, staffing agency. Mm -hmm. Do staffing agencies allow nurses to have mpango wakando? They normally frown at it. You, 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 understand that, you understand that when you come here with a placement agency, as we, we are like, we have hours with you, <laughs> as long as you fulfill it, we, we don't mind. Okay. The staffing agency, you are an employee. Yes. Okay? Yeah. And when they put in the contract, most of the time, whatever they put in the contract in Kenya, you are not even reading it. They can tell you that you work for us and you can't work for anybody else. And if, you are, if you are, your visa is tied to them, and those are the conditions, if you break them, they take you back. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you talked about, uh, you know, the self-sponsored nurses mm -hmm. and the ones that are sponsored by the agents. Mm -hmm. I know of some cases where a nurse is self-sponsored mm -hmm. until they pass NCLEX. Mm -hmm. So once they pass NCLEX, now they are in a dilemma. So should they go for a staffing agency or should they go for a placement agency? I think the best choice when you self-sponsor and you have, you have passed the exam, the best place is placement. Because this guy is a part, this person is a partner with you, okay? The more money they get for you, the more money they, they get. But a staffing agency, they want to lowball you. They want to tell you, uh, you know you have done the exam, but there's no job. There's no job, right? Mm. So they want to give you as little money, they want to depress you completely. Mm. So my recommendation uh, is that since the, 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 the incentive of going staffing is that they will pay for you the, 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 the expenses. Since you already paid, why you, 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 look for, you look for a recruitment agent who is just placement? Okay. Yeah. And then you talked about uh, the nurses who go to South Africa and sit exams mm -hmm. that only 20% pass. pass. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what is your message to the 80%? Now, the 80% who fail, they have to go back and study. Get a coach, go through the websites, and study. Remember, they also have to pay for Pearson View again. 
they pay for personal view, they pay for scheduling, they pay for flight flights. So it's a very expensive fare. You understand? And that's why staffing agencies, they give you one. They'll pay you. If you go there and fail, they drop you. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So it's very expensive to fail the exam. Okay? So you have to listen now or even listen to the people. Don't think that you are a long-term nurse, you are going to pass the exam. You need to study. And again, studying alone doesn't help. You need to find a cohort. Yeah. Okay? There are, there are colleges in Kenya right now who help nurses to study for NCLEX. And there are people online who coach also. So, uh, like now, we work with the a college called North Coast MTC, they have a way to work with nurses until they pass the exam. I would recommend that those ones, if they fail, or before they fail, <laughs> but you know, most people don't take advice until they have been hit, right? Yeah. So, they should go and register and they admit, admit themselves to those colleges so that they can sit down and provide time to study for this exam. They should consider this exam like just going for an a, 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 a degree or a diploma with an external exam. Okay. You understand? Yeah. Because you can see 300 plus 150, okay? Mm -hmm. Plus 750. Yeah. That's $2,000 already. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Why would you throw $2,000 because you think you know? Yeah. You understand? Yeah. See, you should study okay yeah. and take the mocks make sure that you are ready for exam before you go there take, before you pay the same the 1500 go to south africa you must be ready yes you understand yeah. and when they before you ask for an uh, uh, att mm. because they give you and they give you 60 days to take the exam yeah so if you're not ready please don't ask for it okay. and you would work with your agent to make sure that if me, I normally would not allow, authorize somebody to schedule for an exam if they cannot give me the results of their mocks to see that they are passing. Yes. You know, if, if, if the, the, normally the website will tell you likely to pass, not likely to pass, very likely to pass. Okay. You understand? Yeah. So, and if you are working with a life coach, they should she or he will tell you whether you are ready or not. Mm -hmm. So it is a $2,000 decision yeah. to go to take the exam. Yeah. And imagine if 80% if, if of the people are failing just because of that. Are, mm -hmm. Because these are good nurses. Yeah. They know how to practice. Mm -hmm. But the attitude is that mm -hmm. I have done nursing, I'm going to pass. No, you're going to fail. Mm -hmm. Because the exam is not about your clinical. Although it's yeah. about practicing uh, the safety of your work, it's also about the people you are dealing with. Yeah. Even in the United States, the pass rate is about 50%. Yeah. It is the people who have grown up here, gone to school in the U.S., there are people who go to school, to nursing school in the U.S., and never practice nursing because they never pass the exam. Okay. So if it's that serious, then the nurses in Kenya or in Ghana in Africa should take it that serious. Okay. Yeah. And then one question that the nurses have been asking is, uh, you know, there are various qualifications for mm -hmm. nurses. Mm -hmm. We have the degree holders, mm -hmm. we have the diploma holders, mm -hmm. we have the, the community nurses. And then there is one who asked me, mm -hmm. that asked Dr. Amato, uh, Amakove, mm -hmm. um, I'm not a nurse, but I've, take, I've done home care at home. Does such a person qualify to come here? There is, a, uh, that is what is called a um, ho ho home care aid. Yes. No, we don't take, we don't take home care aid here. No, we don't. Okay. And, and we are short of them, but they, oh, you, you, uh, if you, uh, the immigration department only allows registered nurses and BSN. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. So you cannot, you like, like uh, if you are a, an LPN or certified uh, certified nurse, or what do they call them? Like, um, CNA. Certificate nurses in Kenya. Uh, community nurses. Community yeah. nurses. Yeah. No, they are not allowed. They just register nurses. Okay. And and uh, BSNs. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then now the other question is, of course, you the most likely it's burning the nurses mm -hmm. that uh, we have an agency here, mm -hmm. uh, a staffing agency. Mm -hmm. We have a, uh, a placement agency. Mm -hmm. From your experience, in terms of the pay, what is the difference when no, you the, the, the you see the placement agency? I told you, it is in the interest of the placement agency for the nurse to be paid more money, because the fee for the placement agency depends on how on the rate the the nurse they placed. You understand? Yeah. It's if suppose we uh, let's assume I'm, I've agreed with the facility that if I bring a nurse, you will pay me two months salary of theirs. Say so that's my rate, right? Yeah. Now the two months salary will depend on the rate they pay the nurse. Yeah. So my invoice would be dependent on the invoice of the nurse.